Welcome back to Travel Like an Ocean. I have a question for you. Have you ever wanted to understand how the back-to-back -back cruise experience works? Well, this is your lucky video. Today, I'm going to walk you through what happens at all phases of this process. If you have any questions that are not covered here, please ask in the comment section below. Now, I'll consider making that content in the future. More after this. Very simply, a back-to-back -back cruise, or you'll see it B2B, entails you taking a cruise from one week to the other week, and you'll be continuing on. Uh, in most cases, it will likely be the same itinerary. However, when I was on my February back-to-back, -back, uh, the first week, it was actually a seven-day cruise, and it went to seven ports. And then my second of the back-to-back -back was actually an eight-day. It went to an additional port. So you'll want to check to make sure that it's going to be the same ports. Um, I also know when i done back-to-back -back in the future, uh, especially on the East Coast, when I travel out of either Fort Lauderdale or Miami, one of my itineraries the first week may be the Eastern Caribbean. And then the next week when I do the back-to-back, -back, it may be the Western Caribbean. So those are the best types of situations you want to be in. You get to go to more islands and then have a, a better bit of fun. I wasn't disappointed with my back-to-back -back on the West Coast when I did the Mexican Riviera because just getting out of the miserable Seattle winter was good enough for me. I will say though, this year with all the rain uh, down in California, my time in the Long Beach area wasn't that great. However, after a day out on the sea heading down into Mexican waters, the weather turned out to be fine. So uh, I had no problems. But yeah, in general, you want to make sure that you understand that. So just wanted to give you that quick definition of what a back-to-back -back cruise is and what I'll be talking about with you today are some of the things you'll want to do in preparing to go on that back-to-back. -back. The easiest way to talk about this process is to break it down into several phases. The four phases include we have pre-booking, cruising, transition day, and post-cruise. I will cover each of these phases and provide some clarity moving forward. Pre-booking. In preparing to go on the cruise, you want to do a couple of things. This first one is basically making sure that you're going to get credit for your cruise after you're done. If it's important to you, you want to make sure you sign up for the Cruise Lines loyalty program. Carnival has this ability for every time that you take a cruise, you get a point. These points are important because you may notice on your Carnival card, you'll see different colors. You'll see blue, red, gold, gray, and white. Each of those have a significance under Carnival as it shows how many cruises you've been on. Each time you cruise, you earn a night. So if you have a seven day cruise, you'll get seven cruise points. These are important because as you hit different milestones, you move up in the loyalty status. So the only way you can participate in this activity is that you make sure that you have a loyalty number. And if you do have a loyalty number, make sure that number is on your cruise reservation starting off. You will have an opportunity to add these later if you've forgotten to do so. So during this pre-booking phase, you're gonna have an opportunity to either talk to the cruise line directly on the phone or to your travel professional setting up your reservation. As you have these conversations, conversations, please try to think strategically. And what I mean by that is if you know you're going to do a back-to-back, -back, one of the questions you want to ask is, uh, will I be able to keep my room for both segments of the back-to-back? -back? Sometimes you'll be able to do that, especially if you book early enough in the process. If you're waiting later to book, it's going to be highly unlikely you're going to be able to get the same room. That's not going to be an issue as I'll discuss later on, but it's definitely a question you want to be prepared to ask your um, person doing the booking if you could keep the room um, from cruise to cruise. Okay, so let's talk about whether you want to book dire directly with the cruise line or with a travel professional. My option is always going to be to go with a travel professional. They have more access to uh, other perks that the cruise line will frankly not offer you. Um, travel professional, um, because of all the bookings they, they do each time for the cruise lines, the cruise lines make sure that they have special programs. For example, I booked uh, my back-to-back -back with Carnival 
through Costco. And Costco has one of the best programs or perks for individuals going on these cruises. Some of the perks that I had included were um, uh, extra bucks in my account so that I had more money to spend for myself on other things on the boat, souvenirs and so forth and so on. So I had a uh, pretty significant cruise credit. Also, they arranged to have um, additional beverages available for me during the cruise. Had I not had a drink package, these, these additional beverages were handy. So if you remember from my last video, I talked about with the back-to-back, -back, one I paid for my drinks on the other I didn't. So the great part about that was I simply used um, the vouchers I got for the back-to-back -back during the, the, the uh, portion of the cruise that I didn't have a drink package. If you get a drink package, then you know, it's likely that you're not going to be able to take advantage of that um, that perk. One thing about drink packages I want to bring up while I'm talking about that. Um, I did talk about, uh, you know, is it going to be cost effective whether uh, a, an individual buys a drink package or not? One way it's never going to be economical is if you buy the drink package and you're traveling with a travel companion and they don't drink. Unfortunately, the cruise lines have a rule that force everyone in the cabin uh, over the age of 21 to purchase the drink package. So if you get the drink package, then the person in the cabin with you has to get it as well. And that could be that could be a de defining factor that pushes it out of your budget. Now, there are some um, um, some alternative ways you can get around that. You can make an argument if it's a religious reason uh, that you don't drink or that individual doesn't drink. Uh, that may be good enough for them to waive that requirement. Or if you, if the other person in the cabin buys their soda package, um, uh, which is slightly less than, actually it's significantly less than the drink package. But that, those are two ways that I could suggest that you can get around that drink package restriction. Um, I was talking about Costco. Also with Costco, uh, the fact that I booked my cruise through their travel agency, I also got a um, significant credit to shop in the Costco store. Now, depending on the type of membership you get, I get the business membership, which is $120. Because I booked the cruise through their travel, they gave me about $140. I've already made my money back for my membership for the year. That's not counting all of the credit I'm getting for the stuff that I spent during the year. So at the end of the year, I expect to get a pretty good rebate check because uh, I basically already paid for my membership uh, just through going on a back-to-back -back cruise. So just something to think about. Some things that AAA can do for you, for example, is uh, I've always been able to get AAA to give me the typical things like room credit, uh, a pretty good room credit, for, for my cabin, but they've also been able to negotiate um, champagne in my room or um, chocolates or what have you, just because uh, I was I was booking through AAA. So I just mentioned two here, Costco and AAA. There are a ton of them, a ton of them, ton of other agencies out there. Just make sure that you consider using uh, an agency to book your cruise um, and you'll you'll be better off to do that. One significant benefit for booking directly with the cruise line is after you do your booking, the, your booking is now serviced by the cruise line directly. Uh, if you did it through a travel uh, companion or a travel professional, when you try to call up during the time between making payments right up until you make your final payment, if you try to call and ask for a status on your booking, and it was done through an agent, the cruise company will not be able to give you information about your booking. You have to go back through your travel professional to get that. Now, that doesn't seem to be a big issue. However, if you're doing most of your booking late at night or you want to make a payment very late past the hours of the travel agency, then you're now stuck. I, I know on a couple of occasions, I just wanted to call up to ask some simple questions about my booking and after the customer service at the cruise line verified that I was a customer through an agent, they told me they couldn't help me and they had to wait for an agent. Now, don't let them dismiss you that quickly. There are some things that they can help you with and you want to make sure that you tell them that before they try to put you into the 
phone shuffle. If you're buying a drink package or, you know, you want especially dining or you want to set up um, the room for a special occasion like a birthday or an anniversary, you definitely could do that outside of your travel agent. So those are the things you can do. But they tend to, once you get a live person on the phone um, from the cruise line, and they and you give them your booking number the first thing you're going to say is oh costco owns this reservation i can't make any changes and that's when you got to stop them and say listen i understand i'm not making a payment i'm not asking for you to look up any financial information on this um on this booking i, I want to you know, buy some champagne or or water or, or whatever it is that you're going to be doing and they can help you with that it's not necessarily going to be them they may have to transfer you to the customer service part that deals with um th those activities but that can be done directly through you and you should do that sure that you handle um any of those pre-purchase items because they will always be significantly cheaper if you buy them before you get on the boat cruising Embark on an adventure unlike any other with Carnival Cruise Line, where every moment is a celebration of joy and excitement. Picture yourself stepping aboard a floating paradise where the worries of the world fade away and the thrill of exploration takes center stage. As the gentle ocean breeze caresses your skin, you'll find yourself immersed in a world of endless possibilities. From the vibrant decks bustling with laughter and music to the tranquil serenity of the open sea, Every corner of the ship beckons you to indulge in pure bliss. Indulge your senses with world-class dining experiences where culinary delights from around the globe await your palate. Savor every bite as you dine under the stars, surrounded by the soothing rhythm of the waves. Unleash your inner adventurer with a myriad of onboard activities and entertainment options. Whether you're racing down water slides, testing your luck at the casino, or dancing the night away at themed parties, there's never a dull moment on a carnival cruise. But amidst all the excitement, don't forget to take a moment to unwind and relax. Let the stress melt away as you soak up the sun by the pool or pamper yourself with a rejuvenating spa treatment. And as the sun sets on another unforgettable day at sea, you'll drift off to sleep in your cozy stateroom dreaming of the countless memories waiting to be made tomorrow. So why wait? Join us on a carnival cruise and experience the joy of exploration, relaxation, and adventure like never before. Your journey to happiness begins here. Transition day. So now you've been on your cruise for a couple days and you're having a great time. You're now moving towards the middle of the week and you know you'll be ending that first segment of your cruise in uh, a couple days. These are some things that you'll want to do in the meantime. Um, around this time, you'll start making an, uh, announcements about um, what, the, what the people have to do to prepare to disembark um, the, their cruise ship. You as a back-to-back um, -back sailor have specific instructions you have to look out for. You'll hear them making these announcements. But I'm telling you before that last night, what are the instructions for you? You separate yourself from the people who are leaving the ship. It's usually gonna be in the ship theater and you'll be in one section and they'll be letting folks off, at least on the panorama, how they have it set up. They'll be letting folks off um, on the other side. They're going to be asking you to sit to the side. They're going to have to take your picture again, but now that it's going to be a new cruise, they'll guide you in it. You don't need to say anything. You just sit and wait and they'll come and verify um, that you're going to be a back-to-back -back person and they have a list and then they're going to say, we're going to have to retake your picture. The documents you need to have with you include your passport and your room key. Those are the only things you bring down. Now, during the transition period, what you'll want to do is if you have the same room on the other segment of the back-to-back, -back, you're all done. You don't have to do anything else. You just simply bring your, your room key and your passport down to the, uh, the theater uh, on the day of the transition. 
you're all set. If you have a different room, what you'll want to do is you want to pack your bags, but do not place your bags outside your door like most of the other people who will be leaving the ship. You pack your bags and leave them inside your cabin and that's that. Your room attendant knows that you, you are a back-to-back -back person. You don't have to tell them. You just leave your items in the room and they will bring your bags to your next room. This is a great feature. So you don't have to lug all your luggage down to the theater and wait and then they bring it back up. You simply leave it in your room and um, your room steward will make sure it gets delivered to your next room. This is also a, a great time to peel them off a couple bucks if you'd like to. And you don't have to because it's already built in. Some of the other activities that will happen during that day, a crew member will take all of the back-to-back -back folks and walk them off the, after regular people leave the boat, the people who just had one week, they'll be off the boat. It'll be time to process the back-to-back -back folks. And what happens is everyone goes down as a group following a crew member. They walk you back off the boat and they take you down through customs again. This is a normal activity, so this is why you have to have your passport with you. You'll walk off the boat, you'll go back through customs, and you'll come back on the boat, then you're all set. The great thing about that is that process takes no more than 15, 20 minutes. It's really fast, and uh, obviously it's gonna be a lot easier than it was for you when you came on the boat. On top of that, you're gonna be doing this activity before the new people come on the boat. You also have um, the run of the ship, so to speak. So you have early access to the pools, early access to drinking, early access to eating, all of that stuff is gonna be available to you when you come back on the boat. If you remember when you're going on the boat as the first time, a lot of those resources are sucked up when all the people start coming on. At least you're gonna get a jump on that. Another th one other thing you'll notice when you go back to your cabin is that you're gonna have a nice gift from the cruise line. Uh, for my cruise, they sent me a, a lovely bowl of fruit as well as a bottle of champagne. That was really nice and a thank you note for being a back-to-back -back customer. I think that touch was everything I needed and I really appreciated that touch. I wasn't expecting it and it was a pleasant surprise. Uh, your last gift as a back-to-back -back person will be that you're going to get, you're going to get a free picture, basically identifies you as a back-to-back -back sailor and you keep, have that as a keepsake. That picture doesn't happen that day. You have to take that picture, I think it's before the Wednesday of the second cruise. They tell, it's all written down when you're supposed to get that, but they do give you that as well as they give you a drink voucher for a free drink. So again, pretty handy to have. Uh, I did and I did use that voucher on my second cruise because I had bought my drink packets for the first cruise, so I didn't have to use that there. Post cruise. Finally, there's the post cruise. Pretty much the post cruise would be as if you were just leaving a ship like you normally would. The night before, you're gonna get your, your luggage tags, unless you're gonna carry off your luggage, you pack and you go home. The only activity that I will remind you to do uh, especially as a back-to-back -back sailor, is to wait a couple days, eh, at least three or four days, and then go back onto the website and verify that you got your full points in your account for the cruise. They, they say they take seven to 10 days. You wanna make sure that you get credit for both cruises. I had no problem with it, but I did see, I did talk to a couple other cruisers who were complaining that the last back-to-back -back they did, they only got credit for the first chunk. It's just a matter of calling up um, customer service and letting them know that you're missing um, some points. That process starts actually on the website. You go and there's a section called, you know, under the loyalty piece, section called missing points. So you'll want to fill out that web form, submit it, give that a couple days, and then if you don't see that change, that's when you call for a live operator and let them know that you did submit because they can easily look into to the back end systems. If you're persistent and if you're nice and they can find out for you what the status is, at least they can let you know that it's in the system. So don't don't just get dismissed by someone saying, oh, you just, you just gotta wait two weeks, because you really don't. But that is their time window is about two weeks. 
So that's about all I have for you. This information basically was a checklist of the things you need to look out for for a back-to-back -back cruise. In summary, I gave you what the definition of a back-to-back -back cruise is. I talked about the various phases of what should happen during those times. And I'm offering you an opportunity to ask any questions that I may have missed. And if you do that, put them in the section below and I'll try to look at those things and then I'll consider doing some additional content to answer that. But that's basically it for now. I'm so glad you were fortunate enough to be able to afford a back-to-back -back vacation for you and your family. I really think it's the best of all worlds if you can do it. But don't feel bad if you can't because just going on a cruise for four days, five days a week, it's, just, it, it's a great vacation. And a back-to-back -back is just, you know, um, icing on the cake. Another great way to do that is, which I've done in the past, is I've done one itinerary on one cruise company, and then I did another itinerary on another. So that's also an option. So I went from Carnival to Royal, or um, Celebrity to Virgin. So you do have those options, but you have to play a little bit with the itineraries because if they don't leave the exact same day, you may have to spend an additional night in a hotel uh, in the area. Fortunately, the ones that I have done, um, they were leaving from the same port. Um, it's just it's different hours. And it was obviously, since I was already there, it was pretty easy to do that transition. Okay, so that's all I have for you. Until next time. It's usually going to be in one of the large halls where they they have, um, yeah, what, what am I trying to say? Uh, it's not dance hall. It will likely be the same itinerary. My <laughs> red leather, red leather. Testing, one, two, three. Remember to like and subscribe and click that bell.